Peace. This is Wise Words Media back at y'all for another round. And fight fans, what a fight that we witnessed last night. We witnessed one of those generational classics that defined an era in time in boxing. And this was for the 2020s. The first, one of the first major fights of 2024. And it's already fight of the year. What? Well, Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney lived up to all the expectations that it had built up for the past five years. One, the concept of the four kings, which is really five, but it was four in the same weight class. When they were talking about Devin Haney, Tank Davis, Teofimo Lopez, and Ryan Garcia. Those four. But, of course, you have Shakur Stevenson, a part of that. But Shakur Stevenson fights at a weight class that was lower at that time. So they really didn't include him in the Four Kings. Because the Four Kings was meant to be in the same weight class. These guys that could fight each other. And those guys were reminiscent. Those four names brought us all and made us reminisce on the Four Kings of the past in the 80s. When you had Hagler, Hearns, Leonard, Durant. Plus, even back then, it's it's a beautiful thing how history renews itself. Back then, you had a fifth brother, and that was Alfredo Benitez, who was also a part of that mix. So, this fight right here lived up to the expectations of all the years of build-up to have these two finally meet. And from the onset, I feel now, looking back, right... Looking at this thing in its totality, I think Ryan Garcia duped us all. I think Ryan Garcia was actually training very, was actually doing some of this like outward drinking and smoking and stuff like that just to throw the Haney's off, I think. Just to make the Haney's come in there overconfident because I didn't see the same urgency that I seen. From Devin Haney in the Regis Pro Gray fight, I did not see that in this in, in this uh, Ryan Garcia fight. From the beginning, he looked timid against Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia popped him early. He caught him with a nice hook early, and it, it flustered Haney. And Haney had to keep his balance. He had to try to regain his balance. And as he was trying to get his bearings in, you know, Ryan was... Fighting in spurts, getting them. But Haney, again, as you will hear several times on my page, I've always I've, I've said this about fighters like Tifimo Lopez. So many of these young fighters, I hate this. I hate when these fighters come like this with their hands down, like flip. What? It drives me mad. I'm screaming at the screen all night. Haney, pick your hands up. What is it about these fighters that they, they feel like, oh, if I keep my hands out of the range or, or if I keep them out of the eyesight of the fighters, maybe it's more blinding and more fast. Dude, what all you're really doing is exposing all of this. All of this by doing this. Doing this. And, and dude, this is... This right here, this is your jury box. You want people to come in and rob your jury? Jury? You want them to break into your house and rob your jury box? Obviously, you, you do if you're having your hands like this. You got to protect this, man. Protect this. Keep your hands high. Floyd Mayweather would always do... People always talk about Floyd's Philly shell, right? Everybody, every, the famous Philly shell. People don't take into account... Floyd often, half the fight, will fight in a high guard. Floyd often fought in a high guard, a high uh, eyebrow guard. He will come in a high eyebrow guard and bring down his, his jab. And double jab, bring the right hand. He fought with a high eyebrow guard. He, you know, sometimes he'll come to a chin guard, but he will fight with a high eyebrow guard and mix it up. With the Philly show. But a lot of times you saw him in a high eyebrow guard. And that's the thing that all these kids that are trying to imitate Floyd. Imitate that part. 
incorporate that part of your fighting game that Floyd did. Because that high elbow guard avoided Floyd getting rocked in his chin often like a lot of these young fighters are getting. So this dude, Devin Haney, I'm very disappointed in Devin Haney for not adjusting. For not adjusting. You know, like if you got clipped with a left hook and your right hand is supposed to be the guard, the, the safeguard, the guardian of the left hook. If you got caught with a left hook and you survived that, my man, keep that thing glued to your face. Credit to Tank Davis. We got to give credit. I know I give Tank Davis some problems sometimes, you know, but I give him tremendous credit. He was disciplined. He kept a super high guard and tight when he fought Ryan because he knew what that left hook could do. In boxing... The most, the most devastating punch in boxing is the punch you don't see coming. That is the most devastating punch. When, if you see a punch coming, you can roll with it. You can roll with it and take, take some of that punching power off by rolling with the punch. Or you can clinch a bit to take away from some of the punch. But if you get caught with something you don't see coming... You don't, your, your, your muscles aren't able to contract. You're not able to process that information that this punch is coming. Let me contract and try to brace for that punch. If your body is not even bracing that punch coming, you have no muscle defense and you're going down. And that's what happened. You know, he, Ryan Garcia, credit to him, he has a blinding, blinding fast left hook. That left hook is dangerous. And it's dangerous mainly because of that. It, you don't see it coming. And he catches a lot of fighters blindsided. And last night was the latest example. He caught Devin Haney blindsided with that first left hook. So after that, what are you supposed to do? Okay, I didn't see that one. I survived it. I weathered the storm. Now, keep that right hand up. This way that left hook comes, or you could have done, I thought they were, I honestly thought that they were going to come in with the game plan of what Mauricio Herrera did to Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia at one point, about 10 years or so ago, he was known for having a devastating left hook. So, and Maestro, Mauricio Herrera, when he fought D Danny Garcia, what he did was, he started, he would circle to, um, to Garcia's left hand, right? So he would throw his punches and then circle or clinch to Garcia's left side. And he would move, in other words, Mauricio Herrera was right-handed, so he would move to his right, to his right side, which was Garcia's left, and he would grab onto Garcia's left. Or he would smother Garcia enough so he couldn't get that left hand off. I thought they would implement that knowing that this left hook was coming. And after feeling the first left hook, this thing should have been glued. Glued here. But no. You want to keep doing this fancy looking stuff? That's what happens when you don't, you know, you don't create the muscle memory of proper fundamentals. Then it becomes hard to make adjustments in game. And he, you saw he just kept doing this. I don't know what this is, but, you know, he, he kept doing this. And, and still leaving all of this exposed. And Ryan was like, okay. But Ryan Garcia, because he also is not completely committed to boxing. Um, and I say that. Meaning that, you know, the guy is out here drinking and smoking and, you know, so that's that's not really before a huge fight. So, that, you know, you could tell he's not taking the craft as serious as he should be. But with all that said, he has natural talent. So that natural talent is, is helping him get away. But because Garcia wasn't as conditioned as he could be. 
he was fighting in spurts. So he would take off like a minute or two in a round and then just fighting like 30 second spurts where he's just throwing vicious left hooks and right hands. And, but it was just coming in spurts. And if Devin Haney would have kept that right hand up, avoiding that hook, and continue to... The outcome could have been different, but it wasn't. Simply because Ryan Garcia's blinding left hook and Devin Haney's fundamental flaw of keeping his hand down. So, congratulations to Ryan Garcia. As I've been saying on my page for the past year... I'm proud of Ryan and happy that he has been taking the Tank Davis fights. And he took the Devin Haney fight. Like, Ryan has been good for boxing. He has really been good for boxing. You got people that don't even tune in like that now watching boxing because of Ryan Garcia. And I've been hit up, you know, people been hitting my phone since last night and this morning telling me, man, I really enjoyed that fight. I really enjoyed Garcia. Garcia's got me watching, wanting to watch boxing again. So this is good, man. This has been really good for boxing. Thank you to both of these warriors, man. Devin Haney went out like a true champion on his shield, went all 12 rounds, even after getting knocked down a few times, still went out on his shield, survived all 12 rounds. Shout out to uh, Ryan Garcia. Congratulations to Ryan Garcia for shutting down, you know, silencing all the haters, all the haters, everybody that doubted him. He even beat Illuminati. He did his thing on this one. So, you know, congratulations to Ryan Garcia. And I think what should be next naturally is a rematch because Ryan Garcia came in overweight. He came in three pounds overweight. Therefore, he could not be champion. He could not win the belt. Regardless, if he won or not, he would not be able to have the belt. Therefore, Devin Haney is still the WBC 140-pound champion. So because we have that caveat that Ryan won, but he's still not the champion, Devin lost, but he's still the champion, I think it's only, and plus this fight was entertaining. So whoever didn't watch and they're listening today, the day after that, wow, they missed a historic event, guarantee they're going to tune in. So the next fight is going to be even bigger than this one. So naturally, no brainer. The next thing for both men should be a rematch. And we might get a modern day great trilogy. I'm Wise for Wise Words Media. Peace.